right, here we go. We are on the uh, next project, which is another clock capacitor removal from a original Xbox that was my friend's who uh, never did anything with it. Uh, I gave it to him for a birthday present years ago. And this is it. It is, uh, I don't know what even model this is. Uh, but as you can see, it has the bag, original Xbox bag, and I'm gonna take it out. Now, this camera up here is gonna be backwards from this camera over here. Inside the bag, the original controller. Oh, it stinks. It smells like old musty house. And there's some hookups in the other compartment. This is not like my Xbox that I did the clock cap remove on because it uh, is really dirty. Uh, this does look like it has a chip in it or something because there's some something. Uh, on the back there are the hex screws but I just have a perfectly sized screwdriver. This is a model, let's see, manufacturer date September 9th, 2000. Two. This is 18 years old. And you can see right here the clock capacitor has started to ash out. This guy. Uh, it looks like total crap in here so I'm going to have to do a full disassembly and uh, get the motherboard out. And just set it down. We can get a better view of the device. I'm not worried about the mod chip in the device. We're not sporting the mod chip or supporting that in any way. It was just in the device for the repair. So you'll have three main capacitors. They're 16 volt, 1500 microfarad uh, capacitors. The one we want is this piece of crap Sensi. It always leaks from the bottom. You can see it looks like total crap now. What we need to do is we need to neutralize the acid. For that, we're going to be using uh, vinegar to clean the area. We're going to be using 91% IPA. And we got to take off this capacitor. So it's this little tiny turd right here. And for that, we're just going to use braiding and remove the pins. So all I'm doing is touching these two points with braiding and then we're going to remove the solder around it and the capacitor itself. And wiggle and it will pull the capacitor right out. Anyway, you can see that on this one. Here, look. It's really just, it's like a leaky can. It didn't bust on the top at all. It busts on the bottom. So 2.5, 1 microfarad. Yeah, I got those. But am I going to put another one on? I don't know. I don't know. Am I going to use this Xbox? I don't know. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and recheck everything to make sure it doesn't look like it etched through on the bottom. So after that removal, we're going to take some IPA and clean off my flux just to make sure the area is cleaned and you can neutralize the acid with a, a vinegar lemon juice something acidic and I'm gonna do a double one q-tip vinegar and it didn't spread anywhere so there's really no and then IPA to clean it all off so we're gonna repeat that for the front and the board doesn't look bad at all the dust again saves the component but still, we're going to clean everything. And I'm going to clean this fan out because apparently the place where this Xbox was stored, or used even, was in a very, very dirty location. I mean, like, dirty. It's a spot for extra RAM on these boards. That's crazy. And it gives me a chance to visually inspect any other components. Uh, we could do a heat... We could do new thermal paste that kind of thing just give it its 20-year bath 
and uh, make sure we're good. Everything else looks looks totally fine. Whenever you're doing any sort of repair work, it is best to replace all capacitors on ancient devices because as they age, even if they're not leaking, they're not going to have the same electrical properties as they did when their electrolytes were super wet inside. They could be drying out. They could be dry. This does have a combination of surface mounts and through hole capacitors. And we're just giving it a once over. So with that done, we're done. I'm going to clean up the case and put it back together. And that's another clock capacitor removal on an original Xbox. And we'll be back for some more stuff, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.